getting that kind of gain in the swim has been really motivate, really motivational for me. Um, did a big set on f Friday, 18 100s off 140, uh, best pace and held 111s and managed to finish with a few 110s. So for me, best ever swimming I've done. Very pleased with that. And that's in a 25 meter short course pool, before anyone asks, not long course yet, but in the short term, the time that I've been with him, I've definitely come on leaps and bounds and it's quite exciting to be honest. Looking ahead, what's next? Some of you might ask. Um, Ironman Cairns in just under two weeks now. I fly out in three days time. Really looking forward to that. That's gonna be a stacked field. Um, it's part of the Ironman Pro Series. And I really need to get a good race in there to have a chance of the series. So it all boils down, for me, this is like the championship final, final of a competition. I have to have a good race there if I wanna do well in the series. You know, there's no way to come back if it doesn't go to plan. So a lot of pressure on it, but I'm really looking forward to it. I, I quite like the pressure as well. You know, that kind of motivates me. So I can't wait to get there. Sam Long's gonna be there, who's the in-form athlete at the moment. He's been tearing it up on the circuit over the half distance, so it'd be awesome to race against him again. Um, really looking forward to it, to be honest, just can't, can't wait. All right, so last day, heading off to Australia tomorrow for Cairns. Um, just done a little swim earlier, and uh, I'd say the last few days, I've been feeling a little bit tired, like not, not great, to be honest. Um, I check heart rate variability and all that stuff, and um, it's been quite low, so not going to do as hard a ride as what I was planning to do. Well, to be honest, I was planning to do a harder ride and run yesterday, and then have an easier day today, but because I felt quite rough yesterday, I decided to just pack, get everything sorted yesterday, and then thought, I'll do a little bit of a bike run, brick session, but quite an easy one, nothing too taxing. So the plan is, going to ride to my parents' house, um, the route that I planned is just over 50 kilometers, I think, and I'll aim to do around an hour at about target race pace watts, um, which this power meter on this bike, I know it's like a flipping, varies all the time, probably about 300, 310. Um, it's quite a nice one, this one, compared to my race one. And then my dad's been sorting my race bike out. We've got a few modifications done to it compared to the standard Argon um, TT bike, so uh, I'll show you them, show you what I'm planning to race on for um, the, the Ironman in Cairns. And also I need to test it because we've had a completely different base bar set up, but you'll find out about that in a little bit. So I'll get out of the town, an hour at race pace, easy back to, to my parents, which will probably be about 10, 15 minutes um, through the town, and then head out onto a run. Um, and I think I'll probably do between six to eight K. And depending on how I felt on the bike, if I feel good, then I'll do like six to eight K bit of a little bit of tempo probably 335 to 345 k pace nothing too too hard if i feel quite tired then it will just be a 30 minute easy run um along the seafront so yeah we'll get cracking get the session done and uh see how the bike's shaping up and uh hopefully he's finished working on it and it's uh ready to test and uh see uh, i can show you guys what what the full setup's like for me the best thing about going to the challenge championship was the fact that i saw billy harris um, who I alluded to earlier of being like coming on board and helping me with my swimming. And he pinpointed uh, a big error that I was doing in my stroke where I was kind of going in like that. And then I was kind of, my fingers were going up and it was putting the brakes on. I knew I did it, but I found it really hard to try and stop it. Um, and I was always trying to get a deep cat, like go kind of like stretch out like that and catch the water up here, which is kind of what everyone would tell you to do. But he said, there's no point doing that, looking at like some of my characteristics, quite, it would be too long to go on board, but basically just spear the water, go in deeper. You'll stop putting the brakes on, you'll get a better catch. So it kind of take, took that on board. It was very easy to implement as well. And instead of trying to get the perfect stroke, I got a stroke that works for me. And um, that feels like it's taken two, se two seconds, well, I know it's taken two seconds, 100 off, because I can see the times that I've done since going there and coming back, and you can't gain two seconds, 100 in a week's worth of training. So very, very pleasing. I wish I had another race to try before Cairns because I'm really motivated. Bike ride's done, went uh, better than expected. I was just thinking the power was gonna be quite hard to hold after having been the last couple of days, but um, I think I did 62 minutes, 321, 322 watts. Felt pretty comfortable, to be honest. Like the roads that I was riding on were so bumpy, a lot of turns, so it was hard to put the power out because of how it was, but still managed to hold quite decent numbers for the effort. Well, the effort was very easy, so that is very promising. Like that's a power meter as well that I've done multiple Ironmans on before, so 
I have a good benchmark with that one. So that was above what I've ever done for an Ironman, but it felt really easy. So that's exactly how you want to feel. Uh, now going out for the run, I'm gonna play it a bit by ear to be honest. Like, I think I'll build into it, start a bit easier, pick it up as I go on and just do 30, 35 minutes, something like that. Nothing too crazy. Um, yeah, like I say, flying tomorrow morning, which um, takes off 11.30 a.m. Thursday. We arrive 5 p.m. Uh, Australia time in Cairns. So it's gonna be a lot of traveling. Um, so I don't wanna pick yourself in a hole before that. So yeah, let's uh, get cracking and get this run done. Three, two, one, go. I feel a bit fatigued, so I decided to make a call. I'm not gonna do the tempo. I'm gonna, uh, I just did 1K, it was 3.45. Didn't really feel like I was pushing, but don't really feel that good. So I'm gonna do uh, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, nice and easy. Uh, bit of what you call like a recovery, like not recovery, but like a shake out kind of jog or just to get some volume in. Because if I don't run today, then I didn't run on Monday. Um, so it wouldn't be until the next opportunity wouldn't be until Saturday realistically because we're not going to run after 24 hours of travel to Australia like straight off the bat that would just be crazy um, so I'm just going to do an easy 20 25 minutes enjoy the views of the sea and uh, that will be that will be it we'll just have to hopefully leave you with some good uh, scenic uh, shots <laughs> because uh, yeah I'm not going to do it like you could it would be easy to push yourself now because you're getting filmed and then yourself for uh, the traveling or the racing so pick your battles wisely and uh, this is one I've lost but hopefully I'll win the war <laughs> that's the way to look at it yeah. that is the way to look at it so yeah like it is what it is but positive was somehow the bike felt super easy despite for that power so God knows how that felt so comfortable and so easy but got lucky there I haven't got lucky on the run and don't really want to push myself. I could easily hold 3.45 if I wanted to, but what's it going to do at the end of the day, ultimately? It's just a tune-up session. Training the last couple of weeks has gone really well and I've hit some really good paces, some great sessions across all three sports. So, uh, got to look at that as a high. Tightest taper period now. We've got 11 days, I think, until the Ironman, so it's not like it's going to make a difference anyway. The main thing is to go into that fresh, don't yourself before 24 hours of traveling to the other side of the world um, I mean I'll be flying in 16 17 hours from now so that's it I'm gonna leave you some shots and we'll go back and see and I'll go back and show you my uh, race bike in a bit you know what they say get fit or get fit. <laughs> and I don't know what I am at the moment somewhere in between no, that's the virtual place. You're almost changing it when you hold on to the bar. Well, like, how are you supposed to ride with the book? You must be able to put it somewhere else. Well, where would you think? I don't know, but that's a fucking awful place. Like, really, really bad place to put it. Like, if you're trying to ride the bike like that, you're going to keep knocking the gear. That, you Just taking the bike for a quick spin, and then I'll uh, go through some of the mods. we just got to make sure it actually works before uh, <laughs> we talk about it and pack it into a bike box. There's no way this is the same height as my other bike. There's absolutely no way. I'll put them next to each other and I'll check. Because there's no way that's, that's, you'll put that the same height. I'm, I can 100% tell that's way higher than my other bike. I can tell. How on earth did you think that was the same height? Fucking hell, Dad. I, like, this work night and day. It's like an inch. We need to knock some of them, take some of them stackers out then, because that's completely wrong. It's not even anywhere near, remotely close. Have you got a tape measure so we can actually measure it and see? It's like 22, 23 degrees. So it's five degrees more for now. So this is going to be a long jog. Why is it going to be that long? Because we've got to just, just take some stackers out of like 20 minutes. That's, uh, it's not that easy. Alright guys, so 
This is the setup in the new bike. As you can see, it's got uh, different cranks, but I've had these for a little while now, which have got a narrower Q factor, so it's supposed to save a few watts. Um, got the Evolve disc wheel, which is actually a special one that Harry made me for Nice, uh, which unfortunately didn't go to plan, but the wheel's uh, still decent, which is actually a lightweight one, so it only weighs just over a kilo, this disc wheel. And it's got the little Tiger uh, tooth bits on there, which are faster in lower wind speeds. Doesn't make any difference in high wind speeds, but if you're on slow parts of the course and you're saving a few watts, so that's nice to have. Um, the Trioka tri-spoke, which is uh, quick in uh, high uh, yaw angles and uh, fast uh, high wind speeds. So decent for Kona, hopefully for Cairns, if you get a nice sea breeze come in. Um, it's the fastest wheel that we've actually tested. And also, if you come around here, Tyler, you can uh, see that it's got the carbon disc brake covers on both, both of them, which uh, should save about one watt each. <laughs> And yeah, apparently it's about what it saves, about a watt, something like that. So not a massive amount, but it all, every little helps. You can see I've got my model handing it, holding it. Yeah. He's, uh, weren't too pleased about that. And then also the latest bit that we've we've done is we've changed the base bar from a standard Argon one to one that Watchshop have made. And as you can see here, it's quite a bit narrower. So I was, what would you say? That's about four centimeters each side, something like that. About seven or eight, cent, eight centimeters in total, something yeah. like that. Um, and it's also, instead of a mono riser, like the Argon one has here, it's got two, which is actually, despite what you think from looking at it, I always thought a mono one would be faster, but apparently a two, uh, a double, a dual riser is actually a bit quicker, so should save some watts there. Um, trying to think what else, we've got ceramic speed bottom bracket, ceramic speed uh, pulley wheels in the cover, SRM power meter, three bottle cages, so you could have one here and one there with like energy drinking and then one with your gel bottle in there. Nothing on the frame. I would like to get, I did see at Challenger Off when I was there last year, this company made a lovely little bit that filled this whole area in here, like what they'd 3D printed. I can't remember the company's name, but if anyone is watching this, remembers what company it is, please DM me because I'd like to get that and uh, test it because I think that that, as well as being pretty handy with being able to store stuff in there, it would probably be more aero. Um, also got the Wove saddle, really comfy, really light, only 140 grams and also there's no metal railings which you get on some saddles holding it on so it's a bit cleaner. Direct mount. Direct mount, yeah, a bit cleaner and a lot and a lot lighter as well. And also you can still change the angle by undoing the bolts here and tilting it and you've got so much room for manoeuvring going forwards and backwards because Nick, who made this, has put a, a, a massive rail in here. If you just come over here, Tyler, I'll, I'll get it on there. You can see that you've basically got that much where you can move it forwards or backwards. So there's huge scope for going uh, chain tinkering with your position. So that's the setup. Uh, you can put your Garmin on here. This is quite handy. Just pull it forward like that to mount it on. Then you let go and it sits right in the middle, nice and flush, hands over it. If I wanted to, you can get, Harry can make something that goes just under here, where basically something like this would stick out if you want your Garmin on top of your hands. Depends if you're someone that likes looking at your numbers the whole time. Speedplay aero pedals as well. Can't really think of anything more than that, can you? <laughs> Continental G T G uh, GP5000 TT tyres. Got 28 Eight on the back, back, yeah, and 25 on the front. Yeah, we're, we've basically kitted it out to the max. Can't think of any more. But it's all down to my legs, really. If they don't do it, then I really can't blame the bike, can I? Funny enough with this bottle, I should say actually, a few people I've seen have mounted them really flush to the seat post, which looks awesome. But I tried it in the wind tunnel, and funny enough, this position of mount for me was the quickest one of the lot. And it was quicker having a bottle, even an empty bottle in this position, than it was having no bottle cage and having a flush one, which looked real nice, looked awesome, was actually the slowest for me. And I was so perplexed by it. We actually tested it again at the end of the tunnel session because I couldn't believe that the one that looked the most naff, even ones where you get one bottle on top of the other, which looks awesome. You think, yeah, that, that looks fast. That was the fastest setup. And I tested it again to make sure because I couldn't believe that that was the fastest because that, that was what I thought was going to come out slowest. But yep, it's... Uh, crazy that sometimes you go in the wind you what looks fast isn't always fast and that was the fastest back uh 
hydration set up for me. Got space here, yeah. What yeah. you got to add? What's it like to work on? <laughs> I'll tell you in a little while. When we get it in the <laughs> You've bike You've already box. been working on it. Yeah, assembling it for the first time. What was it like then? Tell the camera then. Like. The assembling it for the first time was a little bit interesting. I had no instructions on how the uh, front end went together. I had to sort of work it out. Yeah, so it couldn't have been too bad then, could it? Well, that took all day. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll see you in a little while when it goes in the bike box. There we go. Let's nice. get the bike box and get it in there then. You're like, uh, who's that? What's that uh, engineer that works with Red Bull? <laughs> Got some something Newey into it? What's his oh, name? Adrian Newey. He's he's the Adrian Newey of Argon. <laughs> Argon bike. Right guys, so last session done before Australia. Little talk through of the bike. You've met Mr. Enthusiastic as well, going through it. Uh, I'll see you in Australia. Cross your fingers for me. <laughs>